Hey, what's up guys? It's Ben from Ready, Set, Resell. Today I'm bringing you guys another What Sold video here on eBay. Um, I've sold a ton of stuff the last couple weeks, but I've selected these 20 items to show you guys. It's a good mix between electronics, clothing, and toys that have sold as we approach the holiday season. Um, I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving and a good Black Friday. Hopefully you did some sourcing on Black Friday and were able to get some good deals. Um, I told you guys I've been preparing for Black Friday pretty hard over on Amazon the last couple weeks and I did extremely well. I hope you did too. If you did have some good sales, leave it down in the comments. I'd love to know what they were and maybe I can educate myself on some of the stuff to look for in my adventures. But for now, here's some of the stuff that I sold and I hope it helps you on your adventures. First up is the Sennheiser EW100G2 microphone set. Um, as you can see here, it had two lavalier microphones which are the, these are the packs that they stick on their belts and run the wire or the microphone up and have it clipped onto their shirt. And then down here is the transmitter. As you can see in the pictures, I had them on and tested, made sure they were all speaking to each other and made sure they were in working condition before I put them up. Um, I tend to do that on the higher end electronics just to make sure everything is going to go smooth when the transaction goes through. I had these listed for probably two months before they sold. I had a bunch of lowball offers. Eventually someone ended up giving me a good offer, or sorry, ended up buying it at full price and um, it ended up shipping overseas, left with good uh, feedback, and I couldn't be happier. Sennheiser is a great brand to look for. Um, typically you'll find their microphones or their uh, headsets. I find a lot of headsets for Sennheiser and it's just a great brand to, overall to look for. So make sure you're looking out for audio equipment when you're at your yard sales and thrift stores. I ended up uh, paying up at the garage sale I got these from. I paid 40 bucks for the whole set, and as you can see, I had a 10 times profit on it. So that was a fantastic score. This is a set of, Har or a pair, ugh, this is a Harley Davidson jacket that is a bomber jacket, motorcycle, Harley Davidson owners group. Um, as you can see right here, it had the big owner's group embroidery on the back of the jacket. And it had, you know, here's the inside tag. You can see it's a vintage tag on there. But it was in really good condition. I got this in a set of jackets that um, I got from a garage sale. I had about 10 bucks into them. This jacket actually sold once before and then was returned. And then I relisted it. And it sold within like two weeks after me relisting it. Um, but this time it sold for full price, which was awesome because the last time I took a best offer of $10 less. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of came out on top on that one, but it's just one of those things. You can't let returns get you down. You can relist it, you can resell it and maybe even make some more money on it. But Harley Davidson stuff is always going to sell well, especially jackets and boots and stuff like that. They sell for a premium and they are good things to look for as you're outsourcing. This was a new brand for me. This was a Yeti jacket. It was made in Germany. You can see here, right here's the tag. Yeti. It was made in Germany. It's a uh, quilted down puffer jacket and it actually had the 700 down printed down here on the tag and you can see right here 700 down jacket I had in the title. What that means is it's the amount of down filling in the jacket. The higher that number the more valuable the jacket's going to be. So typically they start off around 500 down and they go all the way up to around a 900 down jacket. So 900 down jacket is going to be worth more than a 500. Um, so 700 is a good little median right there and when I picked it up I just knew it was going to sell because it was a 700 down jacket. I looked it up when I got home and was pleasantly surprised to see that this brand is a uh, it's a pretty high end brand. So this ended up selling in about three weeks of me listing it and I took a best offer of $85 on this one. So look out for Yeti. It's probably not one you're going to see very often but it's one to add to your list just in case. This is a DeMarini double wall fat boy slow pitch softball bat. Um, I always look up softball bats and baseball bats. They are relatively new to me. I started doing them really hard this summer. I've sold, I probably sold 30 or 40 bats over the summer. Um, but this one is a good brand to look for. DeMarini, if you guys don't know your bat brands, add this one to your book. It is a very good brand to look for. If you are new to baseball bats, there's a video up by a Cincinnati Picker who goes through and uh, explains the different kinds of bats, which ones are worth stuff, which ones aren't. He goes through the differences between like uh, aluminum and composite bats, stuff like that. It's a very insightful video. It's one of his older videos, but it is a very well done video if you are looking for straight up information. He knows what he's talking about. He used to work at a sporting goods store, so 
he uh, he put some good information out there. Anyways, I ended up taking a best offer on this bet of fifty dollars. Um, I think I had two, maybe three bucks into it. So just look out for uh, look out for softball bat uh, bats. Softball adult bats sell really well. Kids ones I kind of steer steer away from. This was a band uh, band T-shirt for Tool the band. Um, it was actually in really bad shape. You can see right here, it had a bunch of fading. This is the back of the shirt. And I put that, I put the back of the shirt as the main picture because the front of the shirt had a lot more wear on it. So when I, when I want my customers to be seeing the initial image, I'd rather see them, let them see it more of a clean image. Um, but you can see on the front of the shirt, I made sure to take close, close up pictures of all this, but you can see all the staining and the paint splatters and stuff that were on the shirt it was not in very good condition at all if it was it would have sold for a lot more um, this ended up selling for a best offer of 45 dollars but you can see right here i made sure to mention and you know show this paint splatters and stuff like that but some of these old band t-shirts can do extremely well even if they are in really bad condition like this you just got to make sure you disclose all of this in your uh in your description for the listing but Anyways, I ended up paying a dollar for this at a church sale, and like I said, sold it for $45, um, and it took about a month to sell. This was a new brand for me, and if you follow me on Instagram again, you probably saw that I sold this. Um, I sold it within like three days of me picking it up, and I didn't realize what I had when I initially found it at the thrift store. Um, this is an Ortega's Wool Chimato, uh, Chimeo Vest, however you say that. It's a hand-woven vest made of wool. Um, when I was at the store, I was at St. Vincent de Paul, I was going through the racks and this one just felt really high quality. You know how fast I go through racks and stuff. This one just felt really high quality. So I pulled it out, it had like the, the Aztec um, Southwestern pattern on it. And I was like, you know what, this is probably worth looking up. So here's what the tag looks like. Ortega's hand-woven. And when I looked it up, I was pleasantly surprised to see that they, uh, the uh, prices were going anywhere between $100 and $200, depending on you know the condition, the pattern, that kind of stuff. But this one was in really clean condition. The pattern was all right, nothing too crazy, but it was very clean. Um, so I listed it at 140 or 150 bucks. Ended up taking a best offer of $130 on it, and like I said, about two or three days it sold. So look out for Ortega's. This was a fantastic pickup, and definitely one that I'm going to look out for in the future and I suggest you remember this one as well. Don't know if it'll be a one that you find very often, but you might find it more if you're in like New Mexico because that's where these are made at. This is a toy, vintage 1994 Polly Pocket. You guys know I sell the hell out of Polly Pocket stuff. I find them really often, I don't know why. <laughs> it's a weird thing to find, but I, I find them really often. Ended up picking this one up at one of the last garage sales of the season for like a buck and ended up flipping it for $30. And yeah, just look out for Polly Pocket stuff. I've said it, I'm, you know, beating a dead horse at this point, but Polly Pocket and vintage toy stuff sell super well. If it has the figures, it's going to sell better. So if you're new to my channel, add Polly Pockets to your list. I sell a ton of them. This is a Dallas Stars hockey jersey. I picked this up at a church sale for a buck. I picked up a bunch of jerseys there, actually. Um, I think I ended up picking up like 20 different jerseys at this one church sale, and they were all a buck a piece. This was one of them. Dallas Stars. Uh, some of these Dallas Stars jerseys can go for really good money if it's the correct player on the back. This one was blank on the back, so it was kind of like a average jersey but it ended up selling really fast under a week of me listing it and it ended up selling um you can see right there it's an adult large it's a coho and a uh, nhl official and it ended up selling full price forty dollars in under a week so look out for your jerseys i think i have one more jersey in here i'm going to show you in a little bit but jerseys always sell well just make sure you're looking up looking them up the ones with the stitching on them that are stitched on like this one is sell for more the ones that are printed or have that like um that like adhesive uh lettering on it and stuff those ones don't sell for as much however if it is a vintage one they can still you know be a really high price if the player's valuable so look out for your jerseys oh i have two more jerseys i forgot to put this one in here this is another jersey i picked this one up separate this was at a uh salvation army picked it up for five bucks 
and it's a Clemson jersey. Number four, right here on the back, you can see Watson. Not super desirable player. However, this one was one of their, um, what do you call it? The, uh, like a special edition jerseys. You can see right here, it says Fuller, 1975 to 1978. Um, Nike jersey, medium. This one ended up selling about two weeks, maybe three weeks after I listed it. Hi, kitty. And uh, ended up taking a best offer of $45 on this one. And yeah, just look out for your jerseys, just like I said in that last one. Um, this one was different because it was in orange, or in purple as well, and not one of the orange jerseys. This was a new brand for me. This is called a uh, Nakatano Woman's Hoodie. Um, never sold this brand before. Here's what it looks like. It had really nice like leather ac or leather accents on it, and that's kind of the reason I looked it up in the thrift store. It didn't feel super high quality or anything. Um, it looks it looks pretty cool because of the little leather accents and stuff on there. You can see it had on the pool tabs and you know the little patches and stuff. So that's why I ended up looking it up just in case it was a high end thing, and it ended up being one. So I ended up paying five bucks for this at Goodwill and ended up selling it for $40 in about a week's time. I had, uh, the same day I listed it, I had like two offers of like $25, so I countered one of those, and then we ended up settling at uh, $40, and it sold, you know, sold really well. So this is one that I'll add to my bolo list, and I suggest you do the same. Nakatano is one to look for. Look for that, look for that. Here is a Battletoads Tiger Electronic Handheld. You can see this is a older one, 1988. Battletoads is a really desirable one. Um, some of these don't go for much. They go for five, 10 bucks. But this one is one of the ones that is worth a little more. Ended up selling it for a best offer of $30. I've actually sold like two of this exact one in the last like two or three months. And yeah, it's just, there's something small that you can find at thrift stores and garage sales for usually a buck or two, and some of them flip for a lot of money. There's actually a few of these that are worth like hundreds and hundreds of dollars for. Um, I think one of the ones that I saw was worth like, I want to say five to eight hundred dollars. I forget what the one is exactly, but some of these can go for very, very good money. This right here is a men's cool um, one fourth zip sweater, sweatshirt, jacket, whatever you want to call it. Um, cool is a great brand to look for. Here's what it looks like looks like on the tag. Um, you find their jackets, you can find their pants, their shirts and stuff. It's a good outdoors brand. Outdoors brands in general are something to look for. And this one is one of the really good ones that I love finding. I don't find it super often, but when I do find it, I know it'll sell fast. This one I ended up selling for a best offer of $32, and I sat on it for, I think, three weeks or so. But yeah, look out for Cool. Cool's a great brand to look for. This is a Tommy Hilfiger color block long sleeve polo. Um, you can see right here it has really nice colorway on it. We've got the blue in the center, green on the sleeve, gray on that sleeve. And that's why I bought this particular polo. Some of these you got to look out for. Not worth a ton of money, Tommy Hilfiger, like straight up one color polos. But this one being the multicolor color block, I knew would sell well. Had it listed at $32.50. Ended up taking a best offer of $30 on it. I sat on this one a while, maybe two, two-ish months um, before this one sold. But good sale nonetheless. Look out for vintage Tommy Hilfiger color blocked um, shirts. You can look out for the t-shirts, the uh, polos, anything really colored black Tommy Hilfiger is going to sell. Also look out for the big spell outs of Tommy Hilfiger on clothing because those command a large price too. Here's the other jersey I was thinking of. This is Ohio State men's basketball jersey. Um, this is a vintage one. You can see it's on a vintage champion tag down here in the quarter right here. And I just knew that this would sell well based on it being an old champion's uh, jersey. I didn't know what exactly it was going to go for. There was nothing for me to really base it on, so I threw it up there at 50 bucks. Ended up sitting for a month, no offers. Dropped it down to 45 Ended up taking a best offer of $40. Or a, uh, I put it on sale. Ended up taking the $40.45 right there is what it ended up selling for. And 
yeah, just look out for vintage jerseys if it has like the right look and the right brand associated with it. So I knew Ohio State stuff sold, and I knew Champion stuff sold if it was vintage. So that's why I picked this up. Ended up uh, selling really well for me. And like I said, it set, this one sat for about two months before it sold, but I'd pick it up again for sure. So these next two items are vintage L.L. Bean rugby polos. I don't pick up a lot of L.L. Bean stuff at all. However, when I do, it's usually these polos. They're like the really heavyweight polos. They have like the inner buttons right here. Um, they're just like, uh, when you pick one up, you'll know what I mean by heavyweight. They're really thick, really heavy, and really well made. And people love the vintage style ones. So right here, you can see this is a blue one with red stripes across. And this one is a green one with a blue stripe across. Both of them were the same size, but I listed them separate. I could have bundled them up and made one sale, but the same person ended up buying both of these off of me at a full price of $25 a piece, so 50 bucks total. And I picked these up at a church sale for a buck a piece. Um, so look out for vintage L.L. Bean stuff. Some of it can be worth some good money, especially these really heavyweight rugby polos. Um, they sell really fast and are you know, really good sellers. They they don't go out of style, especially now that the vintage uh, market is booming right now. This is a 21 Pilots jersey. I, I, saw, I showed this on a video. Um, another reseller actually walked right past this as I was in the store, and I ended up swooping in and snagging it up. I uh, put it up for 20 bucks, ended up taking a best offer of $75. It sat for about a month and a half in my store before it sold. Um, I'm guessing it sold as a Christmas present or something because it sold... Uh, you know, as we move closer to there. But anything band related that's weird or unusual or vintage looking, I pick up. So this is one of those things that was like on the unusual side because it was a jacket that had a huge patch on the back. 21 Pilots is a relatively big band. And yeah, it just had, it just had that overall aesthetic of something that I knew would sell well. So ended up looking up, finding the exact model and ended up selling it for a good profit. I picked this up for five bucks when I was in the store. So this was a fantastic score. This is a pair of dye hybrid paintball pants. Um, so I picked these up at a local Honey Hole thrift store, um, not a big chain one, and they had five dollars. They sell all their pants at five dollars, and this one ended up selling for forty four ninety five, forty five bucks, best offer in about a week. So paintball stuff. Um, if you look, if you find the good brands and stuff, you can sell them from some good money. Um, like I said, this is dye right here. This is what it looks like, but there are other ones that you can sell that are also in this uh, this realm of being good. I used to play paintball a lot, so that's why I knew these were expensive, but they have like padding on the sides of the legs, and they're really heavy-duty material. It's like a nylon material, and they're just like rip-resistant, and they wipe off the paint and stuff like that. So these are really desirable. If you play paintball, you know, it, paint can stain your normal clothes and stuff, and that's why you buy special clothing for it. But look out for paintball, motocross, stuff like that. This specialty um, specialty apparel sells really well, and even on the used market, you can get some good money for it. Lululemon, I talk about it a lot. I find it a lot. Lululemon's a great brand to look for. This was that jacket I found in that last video. Um, it was not something that you would typically look at. It didn't have a huge like marketability to it. The only reason I picked it out was because I felt it looked high quality, um, felt high quality, and ended up seeing this logo down here in the corner and right here on the tab. You can see the Lululemon logo. Just be on the lookout for these these sleeper items. You know, this doesn't look like anything special, but as you can see, I sold it for 60 bucks and it sat for maybe a week, if that. Um, I don't really remember the time frame. It was around a week, maybe maybe two weeks at the most. Uh, Lululemon stuff is just super desirable, super great seller, and some of their stuff is, you know, something that just looks like an ordinary track jacket and sells for really good money. So be on the lookout for Lululemon. This is a vintage Nickelodeon Blast Pack cassette player. This is actually the second one of these I've sold, and I found them both this summer, which is weird that, it, you know, I found both of these in one summer, um, but ended up selling this one for 50 bucks. This one did work. The other one I sold didn't work. Um, this one is the lesser desirable unit. It's the more common unit. And the one that was worth more than this one had a little bit of a different design to it. And that one broke and sold for $70. So look out for both of them. Anything really Nickelodeon branded is going to sell, especially if it has that green slime like accent uh, aesthetic to it. 
but this one sold in, I think that sat on this for like three months or so. Either way, it's, it's small, super easy to ship, and something that you can probably find in like a kid's toy bin at a, uh, at a garage sale. I ended up picking this up for a buck at a garage sale. So look out for Nickelodeon stuff. Um, I've sold these cassette players. I've sold the little handheld games. I've sold the uh, phone and the boom box. So there's some of the uh, different Nickelodeon things that you can look for. Um, yeah. This is a Pendleton. I actually found this, listed it yesterday, and it sold, or listed it two days ago, and it sold yesterday. And this is a wool flannel. So you can see right here, you can see right here on the tag, it is a vintage Pendleton tag, 100% virgin wool. Really nice feeling flannel, um, really good condition. When I found it, nothing wrong with it at all. And Pendleton wool stuff just sells well. It has a great following. People want the Pendleton brand because it's high quality, uh, it's high quality wares and it lasts for a long time. You can find their flannels, you can find their vests, you can find their scarves, you can find, you, you know, just anything wool Pendleton is going to sell. The only thing I kind of steer away from, unless it's a really cool looking one that's wool, is like the women's blazers and stuff because they tend to sit a little longer. However, Pendleton wool stuff will sell well. This sold for 35 bucks in a day. And finally, the last item of today, these are Adidas Jeremy Scott Instinct High White Sneakers. I found these at a Goodwill in Florence, Kentucky. I paid $7.50 for them and ended up selling them for a best offer on Black Friday for $150, I believe. Um, ended up, I sat on for a month and a half, two months around there. But these had that like really nice look to them to where when I saw them on the shelves, I didn't know this sneaker. However, it had that look that I knew I was going to pick it up because they had the big giant Adidas spell out right here on it on the tongues of the shoes. It had like that classic striping down the side. And you can see these weren't in like premium unused condition. They had some wear to them. They had some light staining down there and stuff, but and some some minor yellowing on like the soles and stuff, but they still sold for some great money. I will take that flip any day. So this is probably on the lower end of what these sneakers have sold for. However, being the condition they were and it being Black Friday a sale day, I was fine with taking that money and making that big profit on them. So look out for big spell out, big logos, um, and looking up the model numbers on sneakers. So this, this is Adidas, like I said. The model number is right here where it says Art V24529. That's what you would type in into uh, Google or into eBay to find the exact model of the shoe. So I hope this video helped you all out. If it did, please let me know in the comments if, it, if you learned something new. Also remember to leave what you sold in the, uh, in the sale months as we went through Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Let me know something good that sold for you and I would love to hear it. Either way, I hope this had helped. Please keep on treasure hunting and until next time. Peace.